Hi everyone, welcome to the Interchef channel. My name is Curtis and I'm in my new kitchen downstairs in my house. I had tenants and I moved out, so now I have a kitchen specifically for making videos for you. I'm super excited. We have a gas range back here. So we have gas oven and gas cooktop. The first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna make some bread. I have this fancy handy dandy pan here. It's by USA Pan. This is a Pullman loaf pan. What is a Pullman loaf pan? Let's find out. The history of the Pullman bread pan takes us back to the olden days when trains were the most stylish way to travel. The Pullman company manufactured railway cars for 100 years until 1982 when their final model was the Amtrak Superliner car. The lounge car was the place for a tasty meal. These were exclusively for the sleeping car passengers and equipped with small kitchens for preparing fancy meals for the well-to-do and sandwiches and burgers for the common folk. With oven space at a premium, the chefs needed to pack in more bread loaves to keep up with demand. Standard loaf pans created a dome top on bread, thus limiting the number of loaves baked at one time. The Pullman company invented a bread pan to maximize space. Enter the Pullman pan. This fancy piece of kit came equipped with a lid that would flatten out the top of bread loaves. The result was more pans could be placed in the oven vertically and all bread slices would have a uniform square shape, which lent well to being able to cut off the crusts of cucumber sandwiches for high tea. That's enough history, let's go bake some bread. First step in making this bread is milk. So we're going about a cup and a half of milk. This is a very old measuring cup. It uh, is all faded. All of the text is like gone. So we are just going to top that up a little more. So we want to warm this up, but not make it too hot because this is going to be for blooming our yeast. So pop this in the microwave. 40 seconds should do it. And yes, I am wearing swim shorts. It's pandemic fashion. Get used to it. We have some dry yeast. This is a Red Star brand, like the Costco in bulk. I stocked up before getting things ready here. We're good for yeast. Give a little test. I wash my hands, don't worry. But just wanna make sure it's not too hot. That's yeah, fine. So I like to stir in usually two teaspoons of sugar just to get it get started here. I normally just use actual kitchen teaspoons and being fancy for the video. This is actually a tablespoon. So let's go with two tablespoons. And there is an actual tablespoon. I'll use that for stirring it around. And with yeast, some people only like to use like a quarter teaspoon. Some people go pretty heavy, some people go pretty light. I like it to go fast. So this is the tablespoon again, but more of a half tablespoon. Get a little shake in there and give it a nice stir. This is a preference depending on who you are. Some people like to cover it, some people don't. But it keeps the, the yeast from drying off the top. And we're gonna let that sit for about five or 10 minutes. So we have our food processor here. I have a dough blade in there. It's the cuisine arts that I used in my pizza video. Let's get in there. Gotta give it the right spin sometimes, otherwise it doesn't go in. Okay. For a flour, this is um, unbleached white flour. I get it at Costco. Uh, it's a gigantic bag for like 10 bucks or something. So we're going three and a half cups of flour. So let me know in the comments if you like this style of a show format where it's more like live cooking show versus the B-roll heavy style. I'm still working out the kinks on how I want to do things. Salt, I uh, usually use about a teaspoon, sometimes a little more. I'm running out, so we'll see how much we actually get out of this thing. I actually just bought a gigantic thing uh, the other day, but that's upstairs and I don't want to go back upstairs to get it. Okay. We'll make up for that with butter. So we have our flour in there, we have our salt in there. And we're gonna take all of this goodness here and pour it right in. Pop that lid on 
and make some noise. So you'll notice this one's not too loud. Uh, this one does have the induction motor. Um, a lot of them have more of the older style like blender motor that's like super loud and drives everybody crazy. This one's nice and quiet. Take a peek inside here. Not quite ready. We'll just use pulse. Okay, so it's mostly coming off the sides. So this is the time to add some butter. I'm gonna wash my hands first because I'm covered in this stuff. Usually a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half individually. Let's pop that lid back on. Some of you may be wondering why don't I use a stand mixer like a regular person? I honestly don't bake too many desserts, so like cake, stuff like that. And with a lot of those types of things, you can overmix very easily. So I figure if there's a risk of overmixing, why buy a machine that's $500 for it? I'll just buy this thing that can do multiple things. It's a bit more time to work that butter in. Quick side note, if you do just hit the button and walk away, the whole machine will like jump and go crazy and fall off the counter. Don't do it. Just stick with the pulse setting. We're gonna switch out the camera here and get it in the pan. Give that bowl a generous spritz of cooking spray and then plop in that dough, cut it round out in the top just so it's a nice ball and cover it with some plastic wrap and set it aside. Teach that dough a lesson. So now that your dough has been deflated with a savage beating, put it onto a floured surface and make a little ball with it and cut it in half. We're going two portions because we're making two mini loaves here that will merge into one giant loaf. So once you get it kind of flattened into a disc, keep rolling it out into a rectangle. Check it with your pan lengthwise so you want to fit two of these rolls side by side. So try rolling again, work on the sides, slide it over, and work on the second dough. Want to make sure they're pretty even. It does not have to be exact, exact, as long as they both fit in the pan. So now with the ends, you want to fold them over and tuck them underneath the bottom. This dough came out a little bit on the dry side, but you can always wet your hands and kind of glue it down with that water and flour that's loose there. So they're a little bit wider in the pan, that's okay. Next step is to spray it out with some cooking spray. This is the Costco kind, it's much cheaper than a regular pan. Plop those in, and then we're gonna just kind of squish the sides. And I'm pushing down in the middle because I don't want too high of a rise because it forms a dome and then the corners won't get filled up. Slide on that lid and leave it for about 20 minutes to half an hour to proof and preheat that oven to 350. Gas ovens can get condensation inside the glass. Don't worry, it'll go away when heated up. The bread's resin past the halfway mark in the pan, so almost three quarters, so it's a good time to pop it in that oven. And we're gonna bake this for a full hour. No peeking. Try to be very careful when taking this out. That extra one hot thing of the lid will burn you. Slide it off very carefully and turn it upside down onto a cooling rack. Once you get it out of the pan, turn it on its side to cool. Stop, 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 don't cut it. Wait a full hour for it to cool. This beauty is ready for slicing. Now for my favorite part. Mm. 
Thanks for watching the video. If you really liked it, please like it by pressing the thumbs up button there and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me a lot. I want to get this thing taken off. You can see more of my stuff on Instagram. I'm doing TikTok once in a while. I don't really like the editing platform on that. It's a pain in the butt, drives me crazy. My wife does it for me, but I like doing the, the long format videos. So we'll see you next time and eat more bread.